Oh, we're live from Las Vegas. Welcome everybody to our very first live in our new place. This is going to be awesome. Um, going forward, I want to be doing a live every single Monday at this time, so keep that noted. We'll be doing Q and A's. We're talking about different subjects, but welcome everyone live here. <laughs> this is so awesome. The lighting is incredible in our new place. Hello, hello. The move was awesome. The move was really good. It was a long 38 hours. Um, I only got about an hour and a half sleep. Nate stayed up the entire time. He's such a trooper. Uh, but yeah, it was really good. The cats did really well, as you can see. Can you see one of them? I don't know if you can. <laughs> Thank you, Vegas. Thank you. Oh, this is awesome. Yes, yes. Whew. So we are officially in Vegas. We're no longer in um, Oregon. And yes, my husband's name is Nate. It's actually Nathan, but we call him Nate. He's Raw Natty Nate, the nice cream king. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are officially in Vegas. Um, oh, we have a question here. Why do you eat your fats at the last meal? That's a great question. Um, the fats at the last meal, because during the day we want instant fuel, easy to digest food, so we keep our fats to the evening, as well as the fact that fats can kind of bring the energy down. They're a little harder to digest, not harder to digest. I would say they just take a little longer to digest. So with our darker leafy greens, Fats are necessary to help absorb certain fat soluble vitamins from greens. So we like to have our fats with our dinner and we like to stick with the low fat or fruity breakfasts and lunches. So yeah, let's see here. You look so happy as always, loving all the light. I know the lighting in here is so wonderful. It's gonna make for some great YouTube videos. Good morning from Japan, hello, hello. Oh, it's well, awesome to see you all in here. We've got 51 at this moment. Oh, 53. Welcome, everybody. I want to take you on a little house tour as well. Congrats on your new place in Vegas. So happy for you and the kitties. Thank you. Does Vegas have lots of organic, fresh produce? Actually, it's incredible the amount of stuff that we've been able to find here. We got two cases, probably around like... 20 probably more like 36 mangoes for 14 bucks at the asian market we got mango steen we got mame sapote for 99 cents each there are so many options here just gotta sneak around and find the good deals find all the markets they may not be organic but we don't eat all organic exclusively we do try here and there to get what we can but we would rather eat in abundance and variety of conventional instead of trying to afford organic because it can be very expensive it's limited in variety but we do try to get organic where we can and do what we are able to do because not everyone can eat a 100 percent organic diet it's very difficult for certain people in certain areas so it's really all about getting as much fresh produce in as you can whether it's organic or not and keep in mind that a lot of organic um, farms or not even organic farms. A lot of farms don't even have the ability to pay for the organic label. So even though they might not spray very much, they don't have the organic label because it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that little sticker on their products. So because they can't afford it, they can't claim to be organic even though they spray less. So it's definitely something to um, balance out for sure. Do you think raw diet will reverse or help PCOS? Yes, uh, polycystic or ovarian syndrome, definitely. I personally feel like I had PCOS. I was never tested, so I can't claim that I had it, but I had every single symptom that uh, PCOS, definitely, since I was a lot younger, like in my 20s. I So for 15 years, I had those symptoms, exactly. So I think I had it, I just never got tested to prove that I did or not, but those symptoms have gone away. So I feel like it's definitely beneficial for all hormonal issues. And remember, raw isn't a cure-all. It's not perfection, it's not immortality. It's just a really healthy way to eat and it can help prevent and help alleviate a lot of issues. 
Look, we've got Nice Cream King in the house. Ooh. <laughs> Let's have him join here. We've got someone asking, why did you move? Hey, babe. Hey. <laughs> I love it. I saw that you were live. I'm in the office. I was like, what? She's live. Maybe I can join. <laughs> yeah. This Am is I so on? Cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, totally. It's okay. awesome. I was trying to request, but it said it wouldn't request, or I mean, it couldn't send the request. But so I'm glad that you came and invited me <laughs> so I can hang out with you and all the people. Heck yeah. Oh, this is awesome. So we had a question. Why did we move? Actually, do you want to answer that one? Because you have Gosh. a cool story about it. You have a cool story about it. I have a cool story. Yeah, about why we moved and how we kind of manifested in a way. Okay. Um, well, for one, I grew up myself. I grew up in the Mojave Desert just a couple hours from here. So I have like a, I don't know, a connection with the desert. And um, I spent a lot of time in the desert by myself. And then when Liz and I got together, we came through Vegas, did like a loop trip. And we went out to Red Rock and Valley of Fire and and just kind of played around in the desert a little bit and really fell in love with it. Just the warmth and it's a whole different kind of energy and vibe than where we're at in the Pacific Northwest or where we were, I should say. And um, then this last August for our anniversary, we took a trip down to Zion National Park and Bryce Canyon. And we stopped in Vegas, hung out in Vegas a little bit again and, and just was like, gosh, we should move. We should move to the desert, just switch it up. So as soon as we got home, I started just looking at places online, like, what's up, guys? Um, I started looking at places online just to kind of see what is available. And it was kind of like my, my nightly ritual. I would just look at places, a lot of in Vegas, um, New Mexico, Arizona, um, yeah, you know, so basically those three states, Nevada, not too much in Utah, did look around in Utah a little bit. But um, so one day I'm out for a hike and I was just thinking like, you know how it works with, when you're renting a place, you never know what's going to happen. The property manager or the people might decide to sell and you might get a call saying, hey, you guys only have so many days before you're going to have to move out. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I got home from that hike, I'm sitting on the couch with Lissa and I get a call from our property manager and they ask us, hey, so what's your guys' plan? And we're like, well, we kind of wanted to stay here for a couple more years, maybe save up. And um, they're like, oh, well, do you want to buy? The owner wants to sell. And then we're like, mm, I don't know if we really want to buy um, because of the price and kind of the location. And the only reason we really moved to where we did was uh, to be so close to Jacob's school, his high school. So anyways, whatever the case is, that's really what got the, the ball rolling. We're like, well, we actually, we actually have to move now. And where do we want to move? So this is like, it's far enough away where we can start fresh. You know, I spent 30 years back in the Rogue Valley. I've got a lot of memories there. I was actually married um, I was with my, my ex for 25 years, you know, from the time I was 15 to the time I was 40, basically. I was with her, so we have every nook and cranny in the Rogue Valley covered. So anytime I would bring Lissa somewhere, I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is such a cool place, and we used to do this, and we used to do that. And it was, you know, when I would take her to a place that she'd never been, she'd light up. She's like, you've never been here? I'm like, no, I've never been on this trail. She's like, oh my gosh. And so that was kind of the inspiration. I was like, why don't we move somewhere? that neither of us have been and we could make all these new amazing memories together and everything's fresh and you know when you move somewhere you have to learn new road systems and where your favorite stores are and it's a lot of new adventures so um, that's really one of the main reasons is just to create new adventures be in the heat of the desert the desert is absolutely beautiful 40 minutes from where we sit right here 40 minute drive and is Mount Charleston area and it drops. I think, what was it, babe? It was 117 that day? Yeah, it was 117 that day and it dropped to what, 76 or something? Yeah, 77, yeah. I remember 77 yeah. <laughs> up in Mount Charleston. I mean, that's a huge drop and only a 40 minute drive. So you can kind of escape the heat, 
last night was amazing. Lightning, thunder showers, and so really, uh, the food's cheaper here in a lot of ways. Like we just picked up two delicious mammoth sapotes, like probably like this big, for two dollars each. Um, yeah, Asian markets. Like where we lived in Southern Oregon, there was some choices, but the choice there wasn't as many choices of. Um, exotic fruits and such. Yeah, check out that mame. So that was, that's really the main reason we moved is we can just create new memories and, you know, start somewhere totally fresh. But uh, luckily, we're only um, about 11 hour drive, 11, 12 hour drive from where, uh, from the Rogue Valley. So, you know, to go see my boys. I mean, I told my kids, I was like, hey, you know, if you guys, or whatever, whatever the case is, if you're missing me or something and you just have to see your pops, I'll just drive. It'd take me one day to drive here and we'll spend the weekend together or whatever because I've never been this far from my boys, but them being 18 and 20, they've got their own lives going on. They're working a lot. They're really busy. So I, yeah, both Liz and I just thought this was really just a perfect time to, to switch it up. So that's that's the reason plus vegas like there's so much to do here yes vegas i know there's so much to do we're just like there's so much to see there's so much nature around it's incredible it's like oh i love how over the top vegas is it's just yes. fun and plus i feel i lived some of my best years i mean every year that moves forward is always the best year with you babe oh uh, thanks baby <laughs> But my best years before we got together were in a high rise in a city. So I feel really comfortable here. I really like it. And it's a great balance between nature and city. So we get kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, that was my first experience of high rise living was coming to visit you in Canada. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really did kind of grow to like it. Um, there's definitely some things that I miss, like, or I will miss, and we didn't have a yard in Ashland, uh, but I've always had a yard and a garage or some place to kind of like, you know, whatever, if I wanted to build something or work on my motorcycle or bicycle or something, I've got a space to do that. Here, you know, it's a little different. Luckily, we're actually parked right next to an electrical outlet, so if we did need to do something, we could right there. But yeah, there's some definitely some different things about it. Um, I would say probably the thing that, you know, maybe I, that's going to take some time getting used to is going up the elevator and walking down the hallway to our front door. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a real different experience than I've ever experienced having a front door in a, like a hotel hallway, right? <laughs> so, but yeah, that's a cool thing awesome. that we're doing too, is we feel we're like coming at it from the perspective of we just rented an Airbnb for a year because we signed a one-year lease or whatever. So it kind of feels like we're on vacation in a way, even though we were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Somebody um, asked somebody... here, babe. Um, yeah. Um, Mana, can, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm so bad with like even sounding out <laughs> some of these names, but asked, are, are your boys and mom with you as well? So no, they're not. The boys are back in Southern Oregon. My oldest, Jonah, is actually a a river guide and he's on the river right now he's doing a camping trip he's the head guide um on this particular trip so that's super cool and jacob is a uh, a manager at a at the pizza place that i used to go to when i was in high school in rogue river so they're all still back in uh in the valley in the rogue valley and, and yeah and uh, i don't know jacob actually and, and his buddy toby plan to come here in a few weeks so we're really excited about that we're going to bring them to where where are we bringing them we're going to go to zion we're going to go camping so we'll take you guys along as well to see how we pack and what we do and all the hiking but it's going to be so much fun we're going to take them there we'll probably also go to red rock and yeah go for some magical hikes. red dirt someone yep, says magical, here. magical red, red dirt, dirt. Mm -hmm. oh man what does so nate cool. do for work now oh, okay yeah so what i do for work i mean i've got a few different things going on um you know for one like you know i, I sell my recipe books I've got a couple recipe books, the nice cream book, the dude food, working on a new book right now. Um, I also work with both Ted and Lissa at our Course Creator Academy, where we teach others um, how to become online entrepreneurs. 
whether they, you know, they want to build like a coaching program or, you know, courses, uh, build eBooks and such like that. Basically teaching people what we do uh, working from home. So what I actually do is I get on the call with the individual, kind of like screen them, make sure that they're going to be a good fit to work with. And uh, if it is, and, and they want to uh, make the investment to enroll into the academy, then, you know, I, I enroll them, uh, get them all set up. So that's, that's a, one of my main gigs. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited for st the rest of this year to see how stuff unfolds. We, Liz and I both have a lot of things um, in the works. And uh, of course, you can see how amazing she is at posting and keeping all you guys updated with everything that's going on. And um, yeah, it's, it's really fun. It's really fun to watch uh, her grow. And of course, basically, I want to be able to do the same thing that she's doing, inspire people, you know, help people understand the importance of eating a, a healthy diet. Raw is what we like the best. And someone said here, um, you know, a hydrating diet for the desert. Oh, my gosh, it is going to be so amazing. I, I can tell you right now, you know, out being out, going to the storage unit and running around town, I've got a five gallon water cooler with me with ice in it. And I have been drinking so much water, way more water than I drank in Oregon. But of course, I'm running around and doing stuff that I'm not used to doing temperature. I'm not used to, but I can see that we'll be drinking more water here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be drinking a lot more water. And on that note, we are starting 75 hard on August 1st. Mm. So if anyone wants to join, we're going to be sharing all about it in our stories, making YouTube videos about our experience and all of that. But 75 hard it's www.75hard.com. It's free to join us. Um, it's not our thing. It's Grant Cardone's, right? Yeah. That's right. He, yeah. So it's basically Wait, just a discipline is it challenge. Grant, is it Grant Cardone? I think it is. I think it gotcha. is. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but it's a discipline challenge. So there's like two workouts a day. One of them has to be outside. So we're going to have yeah. to like figure out how we're going to do that. I was thinking of doing yoga on the roof at the pool. That's going to be go wild. On hikes. Yep. That's yeah, going to be wild. <laughs> Look at your hair. I'm oh sure my gosh. <laughs> It's this, it's going crazy. I need to get a headband, babe. Oh yes. I'm thinking a headband, kind of like pull it back or something. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Someone says here four hours to LA. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not very far. That's kind of one of the things that we were thinking too. It's very central. You yeah. can fly anywhere in the world from here. You can fly here for very cheap. Um, someone says here you can fly cheap uh, to Oregon from Las Vegas. Exactly. It's not very much to fly out of here, um, and really five hours in any direction, anywhere from 30 minutes to five hours in any direction, you're going to be in the most amazing nature spots. Like you've got Utah, Colorado, Grand Canyon, all these canyons, Bryce Canyon, Zion, Valley Arizona. of Fire, Arizona. Yeah. Like <laughs> Sedona is not too far. Um, Havasu Falls. I think that one's a little further. That one might be like six or seven hour drive. Same with like Yosemite Tahoe, but LA, the beaches only like you know, that's actually where I, I, I was born in Orange County. So it'd be kind of cool to bring Lissa down to Orange County area. And from what I can remember, not too much from down there. Um, you know, I was pretty young. We moved, I think we moved um, out of that area when I was, I was pretty young. I think I was maybe four or five, but we had family down there and would vacation. So the beaches are going to be really cool. Just, there's a lot of really cool things pretty close to Vegas. So that was another draw. Plus, it's there's so much entertainment like mm. there's live music happening all the time there's different concerts of course now that stuff's open back up there's games um you know like the hockey games you know and different sporting events the conventions are all here like it's just really happening place in a lot of ways but i've noticed just these past couple of days because what how many nights have we had babe three yeah this will be our fourth night here okay so this is the fourth night I've noticed that it's going to be really nice to have a schedule and get onto that schedule because it can be really easy to stay up late because you know, <laughs> it's starting to cool down at night and more people start going out. The music starts and you know, this has been a couple of nights where I'm like, oh, I have to force myself to go to bed because I got to get up early tomorrow. We got a lot of stuff to do. So it's totally. uh, a lot of action here. Being from a town of only 2000 people, 
This is a real big change for me in a lot of ways, but I'm super, super excited. It's really neat to see so many different kinds of people here. Oh, that's one of my absolute favorite things about being here. I feel that's another reason why I feel at home because it's like a melting pot. There's so much diversity. I just love seeing all different kinds of people and ways of life and just yeah. it's so amazing. It's oh, happy. so good to see. Yeah. Hey, someone asked here, when's my birthday? Oh, we can't hear you, babe. Oh, how's that? <laughs> That's that good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my birthday is April 20th, 420. 420. Um, hey, so someone's asking here, what do you love about high-res living? Ooh. Well, for one, let's check out the view here. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's nice to facing northeast. Show them which way the sun rises, babe. The sun is rising over this way. Nope. Nope. Way. Oh, it's over here? Yep. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, your camera's backwards. That's right. Yep. So you're right. There it is. Yep. Right over there. So sunrise. Sunrise. And then we it's have... It's nice because we don't have the, the wind. We're not facing south, so we're not getting all the sun all day long. Yeah, we got a nice little balcony. That's our yard right there, you guys. Here's our yard. Ready? Let's go. So, not a very big yard. No. <laughs> it's going to be fun, though. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Definitely different living in a house versus high rise for sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It is beer. very different. I like it here because it's, it, I feel more safe for sure. 100% way more safe. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it's, I, I got to show you what Jai is doing here. This is way cute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they seem to be loving it too. They are absolutely so loving it. Hey, Jai Jai. Look at him. <laughs> he is, he is slumped. <laughs> Hardcore. Oh my gosh. Oh. I also love high rise living because we have a gym and a pool and a lounge and a terrace. All that we can just like go hang out at. And the cool thing is the, the lounge area, we can do our work at so we can schedule it in be like, okay, from like two until five o'clock, we're going to go to the lounge. We won't have any distractions. We'll just be able to sit and work, do our work. And then we've got the pool, obviously, and the gym. So cool. Yeah. So that's really, that's really a massive plus. What's cool is, yeah, we have a nice terrace to go hang out on, which we haven't even actually seen yet. Yeah. Last time when we, when we came here, they were under construction, kind of doing a remodel. Yeah. And the pool's on the roof. And yeah, we have a nice conference room or a lounge, like if we wanted to do some business meetings or or just kind of like, you know, go work somewhere different. Like I was like, oh, you know, we could leave. Like if you're doing work in the office or need it to be quiet, I can go down to the conference room. Mm -hmm. um, so cool. Hey, uh, Bikini, Bikini O'Fanny, um, she says here, my husband and I love you too so much. Hope we can meet you in Vegas. Definitely. Uh, I think her name is Jen. I, well, hopefully we can meet you too. It'd be way cool to hang out and we're super pumped. Uh, so what is 75 hard, babe? Mm. So 75 hard is 75 days. It's a discipline challenge. So it's not necessarily about health, even though you get a lot of health benefits uh, from it. It's more a discipline challenge. So it's like, can you do it for 75 days? And if you don't, if you miss a day, you have to start from scratch. That's kind of like the rule. Right. So there's, you have to drink a gallon of water a day. You have to do two workouts a day. One of them has to be outside and they're 45 minutes each. You have to read 10 pages of a self-help book every day. You have to take a progress photo every day. You have to, what else is there? Brush your remember. teeth. Brush your teeth. <laughs> every day. Uh, but there's some things that we're adding. Like we're going to be zero Netflix, zero Hulu for the entire 75 days. Um, I'm also going to be doing, uh, I want to do like my skincare routine every single day. So there's a couple things we're adding to it for our own routine yeah. um, just that routine the discipline yeah yeah so it's supposed to get you to to be disciplined and the last i mean since february we've been creating ebooks we've been doing we've been doing so much since february that we haven't been able to get into that routine it's been kind of all over the map and then with the move yeah. and everything so now we feel like we're finally 
in a place where we can be more scheduled, get in back into the routine, doing 5 a.m. club like we were doing before, getting up at 5 a.m., doing our hour of power, um, yeah. all that manifesting, meditation, getting it's back It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Hey, someone says here um, his first name is Andy. I wonder what that is. I think it's Andy. I wonder, is that the person who started 75 Hard? Is their name is Andy or something? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, Tarzan, hey, thank you. So um, can you guys, let's see, hey guys, could you, this is um, Edna RH, could you guys give me some tips for backcountry food being raw vegan, please? Oh, backcountry foods. Um, sprouts, sprouts are key to take with you because um, you can just add water and in a couple days you'll have sprouts, but dried foods for sure is a big one. Um, and freeze dried. If you can take freeze yeah. dried food, like if you could freeze dry smoothies and dressings, then you would just have to add water and then you'd have yourself a smoothie or a dressing. Which but, we haven't necessarily experimented yeah, too much with it. yet, but we want to because what's cool with freeze dried stuff is it doesn't weigh hardly, it weighs hardly mm -hmm. anything. Right. So really exactly. nice if you're doing some camping and we're going to be doing some, some, uh, you know, two to three night camping trips and we'll, we'll show you guys how we prepare and the, the things that we learn because we don't know, like most of the time we have our truck with us or we're staying in an Airbnb. So we have a kitchen. Um, we do like to camp and stuff, but backcountry, we definitely want to kind of refine and, uh, those, um, those tactics on how we can go out for days at a time. And these hats, you guys, you can get these hats. These are from um, Chris Kendall, the raw advantage. And it says raw, raw, vegan power. Mm -hmm. There it is. Chris Kendall, raw, shout out to Chris. Vegan raw. power. These are so cool. He's got a really nice line of merch going. We love Chris Kendall. May here, we'll put his, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put his deal in here, babe. Okay, cool. um, okay. Uh, I wanted to give a special shout out to Michelle, who bought a badge. Oh, yeah, she got a badge. Um, right on. Oh, I see her. Michelle. Yes. Oh, sorry. Rocky Hudson Jr. I wonder. Rocky Hudson Jr. We love Rocky. He's one of my <laughs> buddies. Okay, here. Um, oh, yeah. And there's uh, JE5TA. Jesta, maybe? Jeff, I wonder. Have you guys ever thought about a tiny house living? We have. We've kind of thought a little bit about some tiny house living. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know. The tiny house. <laughs> Go ahead. Tiny house might be kind of cool for, for like a little vacay or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing is with, with the tiny houses and having the land, it's a lot of work. And it depends on where you're starting. Like if you're just buying land and you don't have water and whatever, anything that you have, it's going to cost a lot of money to get That's everything huge. set up. Yeah. Um, like a well yeah. is like $30,000. Mm -hmm. Getting your driveway cut in could be another 15 to 20 grand, depending on how you, you know, if you have people who know can excavate, yeah. getting power put in. I know it's so expensive. And then that was another thing too, is like you're saying, having a yard, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So the two of us, we had thought like, well, shoot, if we got a house with a yard and a pool and a hot tub, you know, like we're going to have to have like that kept up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can keep it up. I mean, I've had a pool and a hot tub in the past. They're not very hard to keep up, but it's just another one of those things to add on. And also, you know, having a yard, I've always had a yard. I've always had a garden and it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You can't just take off for two weeks you have to have somebody come and water your garden. And are they going to give your garden the same kind of love that you're giving it, right? Or your animals. So here it's nice because, say, if we do take off, we can have someone watch the cats, you know, and all of our plants, most of our plants are artificial, so we don't have to water them, which I know it's not the coolest thing having artificial plants, but just look at how beautiful this grass is. And you can shove it in a box and it's good to go. <laughs> we did get a real one, though, yesterday. We went to Ikea. We got a couple. Yeah, we got a couple. We got a yucca. This is oh, isn't real. it so cool? Yeah. It's a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Hey, someone, so Bikini here, Bikini O'Fanny says, can you talk about how you did the long drive with the kitties? Litter Ooh. box. 
Yes. We didn't do it. We didn't do a litter box. Mm -mm. We didn't, um, like, we, they, we, we didn't put them in the truck until we left. Yeah. And we put them in their carriers. And Lissa, you had them on your lap the whole time. We would switch spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. We had one in the center and then one at the at my feet and I had Raja at my feet most of the time because he seemed a little bit more comfortable. He was like rolling on his back and like just, you know, he was really enjoying the, the drive. He liked being in this cage. John, Plus the carriers, know. remember the carriers, we had those out. Yes. We bought the carriers like two months before we left and we would open them up fully open and we would feed them their food in the cat carrier. Mm -hmm. So that way, when the time did come to put him in the carrier, they were totally familiar with this carrier. Yeah. They just, they weren't, they weren't zipped in it before. So that <laughs> kind of probably made him, you know, a little weird, but we also gave him the rescue remedy. Yeah. Rescue remedy for pets. You can get it at pretty much any health food store, anywhere that sells supplements. They can get, you can get the rescue remedy for pets. And we gave them drops probably every like three to four hours while we were on our trip and they didn't really want water. Like we stopped a couple times for us to use the washroom, but I, I would pour a little water in their dish and I would put it in their carrier, but they weren't really interested in it. So in order to keep them hydrated, we got them these treats that are 84% water. They're like a puree kind of treat. And I know it's not vegan, but cats are oblig obligatory carnivores, so we do feed them that. But we got these special treats because they're so hydrating and because they weren't interested in drinking the water because they were so stressed out, but they wanted the treat. They were like, oh, this is great. So just keep them a little bit hydrated while we were driving. And yeah, it was and, interesting. And we drove, we drove at night. Yeah. Yeah, we drove at night too, so it was cooler. Yeah, it was dark, so they didn't dark. know what was going around. Yeah, yeah, we left it. We left at nine at night, and we got here basically the next day at like eleven. Yeah, in the, you know, <laughs> in the in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so someone here says here, um, infinite oneness. Don't take the five tasks lightly. Made it to day six before having to reboot. I'm thinking they're talking about <laughs> seventy five hard. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, we, you have to plan 75 hard. Yeah. You have to yeah, be Rocky. scheduled with it. Rocky Hudson Jr. Yeah, we're in the same house doing the live. Liz is in the living room. I'm in the office. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. and uh, so just funny. call me mini me. Is Nate doing the face routine too? I sure am. Yes, I've got my is. special face cream. And look, my <laughs> face is much smaller. I've only got like this much face <laughs> to wash. <laughs> But then you got the beard action. You're going to do the beard oil. Yeah, the beard you know, takes, you know, there's, um, there's special beard shampoo and beard conditioner and oil. And you put the little dropper in and you just drop a little bit of oil because the oil is to hydrate the skin up. And um, I actually need to do the beard. I haven't done it since I've been here. Mm -hmm. The beard. <laughs> the beard. <laughs> the beard. <laughs> Nate. You're giving me Tom Hanks castaway vibes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so totally right. I'm telling you guys, I trip out even still when I see myself in the camera or I pass a mirror. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I'm just, I used to have really long hair, but I've never had a beard. Now, I mean, I've had a goatee, a pretty good goatee like this big, but I've never had the beard. And it's just <laughs> so. Weird, <laughs> but it's whatever. We're having fun with it. Yeah, just it's gonna fun. Let it go. It's the year, the year of the beard. Yep, the year of the beard. The year of the beard. <laughs> what All floor right, what are we, we on? Here? We are on the twenty-first floor. Yeah. Yes. What What does the five a.m. club include? Will you be sharing that? Yes, we'll be sharing that. The five a.c. five a.c. which is the five a.m. club and. Man, it's been a minute since we've been on that like strict routine and it's a really good routine to be on. You just, you really are like in control of your day. Yeah. I felt like. You I know, felt like, like that too. Yeah. So you wake up. What we did is we would use the snooze button on our alarm because it, it lasts for 10 minutes. And each time, you know, it would go off. We would just press the snooze button and we'd have another 10 minutes. So each 10 minute increment, first would be a meditation. 10 minutes, you just woke up, meditate. 
Just sit quietly. Try not to fall back asleep, right? The alarm goes off. You write in your gratitude journal. What are you grateful for today? And then you, 10 minutes goes by. Then you write down affirmations. I am. And you know what's really interesting is the things that we said that we affirmed, we are now doing. Like mm -hmm. I had said, we're going to be, run, I, I run retreats, right, with, with Lissa, you know, and then we ran the retreat with Ted. It's like different things like that, right? It may be silly, maybe small, but it's, you're affirming it. So then you read for 10 minutes and then, or, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be in this order. Then you write down daily goals. What are you going to do today? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could add into your life goal too. Like, what do I really want to accomplish before I skip out on this life, right? Yeah. Daily goals. What else, babe? What else do we do? Then we would do, okay, so it was meditation, gratitude, affirmations, goals. Re read. read. We would read for 10 minutes, and then we would do the last 10 minutes, we would practice headstands. Yeah, that's what it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. We got to get back on that. Yeah, totally. That was really cool. I go upside down every day. <laughs> and we were getting good at it too, because we were doing it every day. So you get good okay, so, at what you do every day. So maybe here, Andy uh, Frisella equals first form bodybuilding subs. Hmm. Okay. Maybe, maybe he's the one that started. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't oh, know. But Rob oh, Vegan Blink. Doctor says you look like Moses. <laughs> blink of an eye. It's blink of a kind, not bikini or fanny. How did I get bikini or fanny? Oh my gosh. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't read it close enough. Sorry about that. Yeah, not bikini. It's blink of an eye. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if Enzyme's still in here. Enzyme. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is too funny. And your mom, your mom's in here. Hey. Hey mama. We love you. The gentle yeah. homeopath. She's yeah. checking us out. Aww. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Rob Vegan Doctor. Look like Moses. Oh, my gosh. Aureli, <laughs> wait until this hair gets long. I used to have it, like, down to almost my butt. And people did say, like, you look like Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's going to oh, be fun. Man. So let's do a quick little house tour here. Oh, yeah. I like that. Let's do a house tour. Okay. I'm going to flip the camera. So here we go. Look how gorgeous. Man, this place is so awesome. So we'll start, we'll start at the balcony right here. Okay, so you, this is the balcony. We've got this gorgeous view of the mountains. And the thunderstorm last night was awesome. So here's our living area. That was cool. Where we're going to do most of our work. We're going to film a lot of YouTube videos, that kind of thing. Then we have the hutch. This here, we keep all of our props for our photography. We keep everything in here. We just, we haven't unpacked everything yet, but we have like all the little knickknacks and stuff to make our photography. We have our Jai Jai. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and then here's our little dining area. It's kind of a mess, but we've got our papayas and bananas. Look, it's dude food. Dude food. That's Nate's book. Dude food. And this is where we're going to take all the photos. I'm oh, so excited for that. That's going to be so have cool. Three setups here. Yeah. Or two food. with like our stuff kind of spread out. Right. Oh, that's going to be awesome. So this is where we're going to take all the photos that you guys will see on Instagram. That's going to be awesome. Then. So this is what it looks like from here. Lots of space, really amazing. So then we have our kitchen. How <laughs> big the kitchen. It's a mess, but. <laughs> we have so much work to do still. Yes. Yeah. And these, these mangoes, we got two cases of these mangoes for 14 bucks. There's what? like tons of mangoes in there <laughs> yeah that was so cool seven dollars for that box and they're really really good mm -hmm. i they think are. they were selling them cheaper because they were getting to that stage a little over right yeah i think they were definitely overripe because they're perfect yeah. so here we go and then this we got these white shelving units because we can't use our spice rack here 
Uh, there's not really anywhere to put it, but we have all our spices in here. Um, and I wanted to show you guys our, our pantry. I love the pantry. Yes, the pantry. And we have all of our lentils, our chickpeas, our sprouting seeds. So everything here that you see, we sprout. And we like to keep a lot of extra on hand, like all of our lentils. We have a lot of lentils and we keep them that way because it's it's great uh, for storage purposes, right? Like if we need extra. And then we've yeah. got our cacao or some nuts, some random things, coconut flour. We've got our coconut aminos down there in our empty jars. But this is our pantry. And oh, we have even more seeds up here. Lentils and <laughs> more lentils. Yeah. But there we go. So that's the kitchen. That's the kitchen. Pretty soon it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, look at all those boxes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lots of boxes. And then here is the hallway. We got this really cool um, painting yesterday. Well, it's, mm. a, it's a photograph, but we're going to hang that, that right here, I think. We'll hang that right yeah, there. Yeah, right when you come in. Yeah, and this is the entrance way. And we just got this unit. So we can keep our singing bowls here. Ready? Yes. We can do that as soon as we come in the house. <laughs> then we have down the hallway, we've got the cat's bathroom, the main bathroom, two sinks and our bathtub here. And then we've got our bedroom. This is laundry, but all it is is just the laundry. There's nothing else in there. And whoo, there's me. We've got our bedroom. I love our bedroom, babe. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> raw vegan doctor. Seems like all the cool raw vegans are moving to Las Vegas. <laughs> really? Are there more? <laughs> oh, well, we've got Marcus and Kara here. We've got John oh, Kohler. Yeah. I don't know who else is moving here, but yeah, yeah. We just got this, this new comforter, and the cats love it. They, they love it. it. Yeah, we just need something to put above it. But other than that, oh, I like that you put the plant there. That's really you like nice. that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Cool. So then, all we have left is the main bathroom. This is a mess as well. But here's our two sinks. Obviously, we'll clean this up. <laughs> and yeah. we have this gorgeous shower. Gorgeous shower. And a closet. So I've got all my stuff. That's all my stuff. It's like come down so much over the years since from Looks the camera. Thanks. I got a lot of work to do on my side still. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. You don't have nearly oh as gosh. much stuff as I do. <laughs> yes. And then, then the best one, because you're in it. Oh. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh! That is pretty cool. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Is people who live in Vegas that are, they're, they're called vegans. Yep. Like Oregonians, Californians, vegans. I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay. Because our glasses are yeah. great. Yeah. But you guys get the point, right? Uh, <laughs> Bye. Bye, baby. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, my so, yeah, gosh. That was awesome. But, yeah, so that's our, our house. The the vegan vegans. Yeah. In Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, and um, <laughs> someone here says, Julie, um, 10... Tennyson says, I think I'd feel claustrophobic so far from nature. Glad it suits you both, though. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That's one of the things that I'm really going to have withdrawals from is where we lived in Ashland, we could just walk and go right into the woods, into some trails. I could walk to the creek, soak my feet, take a dip. You know, here, I'm sure there's some places, but we're going to have to sniff them out and find out. 
So yeah, it's def there's definitely some adjustments. You know, mm -hmm. there's always gonna be some adjustments. You might go somewhere totally amazing like where we were, and one of the downsides would be mosquitoes at night. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. here there's no mosquitoes. It's like, there's always something somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's pros and cons to anywhere <laughs> that you live. And like, we could have gone to Florida, but there's hurricanes. We could have stayed in Oregon, yeah. but the, the, the fires, like the fires, your boys lost their house. They yeah. lost everything. Your ex, like house. everything, their vehicles, except for yeah. one. But they lost it all in the fires. And it's like, yeah, there's like good stuff, but there's also cons. So yeah. we just really got to pick the pros, like wh why yeah. you want to live in a certain place. And well, and what's yeah. cool too is it's not very far. I mean, Mount Charleston, mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, we'll show all you guys like what it looks like up there. I mean, there's trees, you know, there's snow. I mean, this, there's a ski resort just like yeah. 45 minutes from here, mm -hmm. right? I mean, of course they make their own snow and you know, on the because they probably need to extend their season. They only have two lifts. It's not like this massive resort, but still like there's snow. Yeah. Um, there are some lakes around and stuff. It is definitely different though, in a lot of ways, but that's what's so cool is, is uh, you know, really the way I feel is it doesn't matter where you go, there you are right? So no matter where you go, there you are. And as long as like me personally, as long as I can get into nature, I don't care where it is. I feel at home because this is, it's mother nature, mm -hmm. right? She's waiting for us, whether it's the desert, the tropics, the forest, the beaches, you know, there's, it's nature. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. And the nature here is so different and it's so beautiful in so many ways. And the greenery, you know, Oregon's not going anywhere. Yeah, like none exactly. of these none of these places they ever go anywhere. They're there forever. So anytime we want to go visit, it's there. But what's so cool is to go check out all these other places that that our great mother has. Right, like this earth is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Nature is so incredible. You guys, I have to go. I've got a call coming up in fifteen minutes. I love all you guys. Lisa, thanks for having me on. I just oh. had to, I didn't mean to interrupt your live. I was like, oh, no. she's live in the living room. I'm, I'm just, let's just do this. This is going to be funny. <laughs> so, so cool. I love it. I love it. Thank you, babe. Right, Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> awesome, friends. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, that was really fun to have Nate on, even though we're in the same place. <laughs> So cool. And thank you so much to um, those who purchased badges. We have the badges. It's kind of like a little way to support us if you want to. Um, thank you very much for those that did get the badges. And just so you guys know, also 40% off any or all of our recipe ebooks. The code is rawfood40. You can go to the link in either mine or Nate's bio and grab our recipe books if you want. And we've got the app the app is running and you can use it. It's a meal planning app. So you can go in there. There's 43 recipes right now with more added at on August 1st. So at the first of every month, we're going to be adding new recipes to the app. It's $5. It's $5 a month. Uh, the website is rawfoodromance.com. So you can go there. We're going to be using yep. that app a lot. Yes, we're going to be using the app a lot. And uh, for 75 bar, it's going to be so important. I feel like to have mm -hmm. that app, it's going to be so nice. We won't have to think about, you know, what we are getting or what we aren't getting. We'll be able to just, the app is so cool because it just tells you it's already all calculated for you. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, this is like driving me crazy. This kitchen. <laughs> I don't like to have a kitchen like this, but I can't deal with any. Oh, you guys check this out. We got a new pepper grinder yesterday. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. super, you can actually like fling pepper <laughs> with it. It's so cool. This was our old one, which is super, super awesome. Beautiful wood, but it's more decorative. It only holds a teeny tiny little bit of peppercorn. Yeah. This thing here, full of peppercorns. We like a lot of pepper. We're trying to show it off. <laughs> Love you guys. Awesome. Um, yes, the recipes in the app are different than the ebook. 
I will be adding occasionally ebook recipes to the app for those that might want to have it included, but the recipes in the app are different. I'm trying to keep everything fresh and new so there's no too many repeats, but yeah, they're going to be new. We've got Raja. Hi, Raja. <laughs> they are loving it. They are loving it. Thank you guys again so much. I hope you enjoyed this live. Look at the lighting in here. It's just amazing. I love it. It's going to make some great videos. Uh, just, oh my gosh, we're so happy to be here. We'll probably be here for at least a couple years, probably. Um, just depends on life, what life throws at us. But we, as long as we have each other, it's all good. As long as we have our healthy little kitties then we're good. And as long as we have you guys, we're good as well, because you are the reason why we share, the reason why we inspire, because we want you to enjoy raw foods, enjoy all the raw foods, and go on adventures with raw foods, and have some delicious stuff. Uh, your place is beautiful. Good luck. Thank you so much. Lo I love the app. Got it last week. Yeah, the app is super cool. And there's going to be new features added to the app as we go, like we'll have, um, I think you, there's like a searchable thing. Uh, they're going to add like daily totals for fat percentage. So there's so many cool things coming to the app as well as in the app currently. So sign up. It's only $5 a month or $50 a year. You get two months free. If you sign up for the whole year, you could just use it for the year and then sign up again if you want to, if you love it. Uh, but yeah, that's at rawfoodromance.com. Link is in the bio. Um, Ashland misses you. Oh, we loved Ashland. Ashland will, will always hold a very special place in our hearts, as does Vegas, as does Canada, Edmonton. It all is beautiful. It's all amazing. There's always something amazing with every single place. And we love to travel around, go to different places. And I love that we can create new memories here together and just enjoy Vegas together because it's our special place. Um, but yeah, we've got Jai still here. Hey, Jai Jai. Yeah. He is loving it. He is loving it. <laughs> oh, hi from Croatia. I think it's great how you change place of living with no problem. Yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> they say that moving is one of the most stressful things that a human can do. And it is very stressful. We packed our U-Haul. Um, we had help from our friends Matt and Fawn in uh, Oregon. So they helped us with the big stuff. And then we packed the whole U-Haul ourselves. It took like six or seven hours. My feet were so sore at the end of it. But we ate a lot of melons. We ate a lot of mangoes. We had our salad. And then we tried to sleep. We, we planned to have like a one hour, two hour nap before we left, but neither one of us could sleep. We're like, we have to do this and this and this and this. And we still have to pack that when we get up from our nap. And we were just laying there like not able to sleep. So we're like, let's just finish packing. So we finished and left right after that and then drove over 14 hours to Vegas. And then once we got here, we met with the movers and they unpacked, it was about three or four hours for them to unpack our U-Haul with us. So Nate stayed with the U-Haul and directed them where, you know, stuff, cause he had some stuff to go to storage. And then I was up here kind of directing where everything would go. But then after that, we started unpacking and then we were like high on life. <laughs> we just couldn't go to sleep. So we were up for about 38 hours straight. Um, and it is stressful to unpack and leave what we're comfortable with and all of that, but it is what it is, and we are happy here. This is Raja. Yes, we have two, two little black kitties, Raja and Jai. <laughs> Raja, say hi. Say hi, Raja. Yes. <laughs> Raja is the more stoic of the two. He's, he's pretty awesome. They're both awesome. Um, enjoy your pets and all those exotic fruits. Thank you. Thank you. Um, enjoy. Let's see. I moved twice in the spring while I was dropping my ebook and it was nuts. Yeah. And I'm moving twice. It's, it's, it's stressful. There's a lot of moving parts, right? You're doing so much and whew, you just gotta, you just gotta get through it. And eventually it's all good. <laughs> 
Um, you guys are inspiring me and my husband to just get rid of a lot of our stuff and just move on an adventure. That's awesome. We don't have kids and we move easily. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That'll be awesome. Oh man, yeah. So was it hard to tell them apart at first? Yes, it was. When we first got them, I was like, okay, who's who? But Raja, Raja, let's go down here and see Raja. Hello, Raja. Hello, Raja King. So Raja has shorter hair. Like his hair isn't as um, crazy as Jai's. And Raja has more of a, a majestic snout. Plus he's heavier. He's way more muscular than Jai. And his eyes are more orange. So that's Raja. And then here's Jai. Jai's hair is way more um, long. Like, it's not long hair, but it's, it's definitely longer than Raja's. And he's got more of a baby face. He's more of a poof ball. And his eyes are a little bit more yellow. So, and they both have very different personalities. So you can kind of tell who's who just by how they walk. But it's something that you, you get to learn as you have them. But it's my... My Jai Jai. Jai is almost exactly like Chai, my orange cat. For those of you who remember Chai Chai, he passed away. Um, he was almost 20. He was my bestest best friend. But Jai is very much like Chai. He does a lot of things. Oh, and they love their bellies rubbed. And they don't bite. Like, these are, like, the best cats ever. They don't bite. They don't scratch. They don't meow. I mean, they meow, but it's like to get our attention here and there, but they don't howl or meow and they don't scratch. They love their paws being played with. They're just like the best cats ever. Yes, sweet boy. Yeah, they're loving it up here, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. So, 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 let's see here. Are you going to Woodstock? Unfortunately, this year we are not going to Woodstock. Um, we wanted to go last year, but obviously we couldn't. Um, this year, the only reason we're not going is because we just moved. Very expensive to move as well. <laughs> Damage deposit, first month's rent, current month's rent, pet deposit, key deposit, cleaning fees, U-Haul, um, all the stuff that we bought for the house, gas. Like it's just so expensive to move. So we're kind of recovering a little bit from that. <laughs> um, but also we didn't want to leave these guys by themselves in a new place for three weeks because if we do go to Woodstock, um, we want to be driving. So we're going to drive all the way to New York and then we drive down, go to Florida, visit our friends in Florida and then drive through Texas, Arizona, that kind of thing on the way home. So it would be like a three week trip and we didn't want to leave them alone. Uh, for that, like as soon as we move into a new place, we, we're leaving for Woodstock. So Woodstock's not happening this year, but you'll be able to see Jonah because he's going to be there. Nate's son, Jonah, he'll be there. Um, and cute little boys. Have you heard of the Texas Fruit Fest in September? Yeah, I have. I, I have heard of the Texas Fruit Fest. Um, that's cool. Are the they're people who can successfully maintain a high raw diet when they eat cooked foods one meal a day or is cooked foods too addictive? Well, the thing is, like, uh, I feel like it's more of a dependency on cooked food or it, it really depends because I don't believe that cooked foods are toxic or poisonous like some raw foodies say. It also depends on what you're cooking like if you're just putting a little quinoa in your raw salad no big deal if you're putting a little sweet potato in your salad no big deal but if you're eating cooked foods like beyond burgers and french fries along with your raw yeah that's probably going to not be as easy to maintain raw because you're eating so high fat you're eating a lot of processed dense calories that kind of thing um, but definitely uh you can eat cooked food it's not like it's uh, it's the end of the world if you want to do all raw then do all raw if you want to do a little bit of cooked food then do a little bit of cooked food it's about being vegan being healthy so whole food plant-based you're gonna steam a little broccoli go for it until you don't want the broccoli anymore maybe you want to go all raw um, we are here not to make raw vegans more raw vegan we are here to inspire 
all people to eat more raw foods. And if you want to go all raw, that's cool. If you just want to go high raw, that's cool. It's about getting more plant diversity, getting more calories from raw foods, getting more hydration, that kind of thing. So don't feel like cooked food is poison or toxic or like heroin or anything like that because it's not the junk food is another story. We're not talking about junk food. We're talking about like a, a boiled sweet potato or a cup of quinoa or something like that. We don't personally consume those foods because we just prefer how it is on raw. And we don't choose raw foods because we're scared of cooked foods. We choose raw foods because we love raw foods and that's what we want to eat every day. So that's why we pick them. It really is in the mindset. It, it's definitely highly in the mindset. Um, Let's see, like raw till four. Yeah, if you wanted to do a raw till four, if that's what you could do, then do it. I just want to see more people eat more raw foods. A lot of people will say, well, I can't do it 100%, so I'm not going to do it at all. That's not the point. The point is to add more every single day as much as you can and enjoy the process. Enjoy more raw foods until maybe that's all you want to eat. So it's all good. Um, do you have any friends in Las Vegas? We have friends coming to Vegas. <laughs> we have lots of friends that stop by and we'll be messaging when they come into Vegas. Like I have a friend in Edmonton who messaged and was like, now I can say hi, we can hug when I come to Vegas, right? So like there are a lot of conferences that some of our friends come to. We'll be able to say hi to them when they're here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have any friends. Uh, we do have a friend that we just made um, her name's Marissa. She's our friend Angelica's real estate agent. She's the one that hooked us up with this place. So she's a new friend, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll find new friends. It'll be cool. But we're going to really focus on our um, 75 hard coming in August, really focusing on getting into our routine. We have a lot of work coming up. I've got my raw immersion course that I want to keep working on, which I've had on the back burner for a little while because we've just been working on other stuff. Um, we've got obviously the raw vegan, ultimate raw vegan bundle um, that's coming up. I'm not going to say the dates, but it's going to be here at some point before the end of the year. <laughs> uh, that's coming, which is a load of work. It's a lot of work. I put so many hours into arranging and organizing the bundle. So and the bundle is always like there's different bundles. So those of you who are whenever you see a bundle being promoted by anybody, go and check it out because they're always going to be different. They might have similar things in them, but for the most part, they're different offering. So go check it out, see what's inside. And if you like it, get it. They're normally 50 bucks and you'll get like hundreds of not thousands of dollars worth of content. But again, they always change. The one that Chris Kendall and I do, the Raw Advantage, we do the ultimate raw vegan bundle and we have it as an experience. It's a one week experience where all of the creators, we go live with each other. It's kind of like an online festival. So it's got a lot of moving parts that go on behind the scenes, which Chris and I do. So that's a huge amount of work. We start working on it a couple months before the event actually happens. And then we're still working on it for months after the event happens. So that's why we only do it twice a year because it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, but we love to be able to provide uh, people so much much content for 50 bucks and it's a great deal so keep an eye out if you want to be part of my email list uh, send me a direct message with your email address and I'll add you to my email list which we'll be using for a lot of the promotions for the bundle but watch our stories watch our page because we'll be sharing a lot about it when that comes we'll be doing a lot of lives with other people too which will be really awesome um, let's see, let's see. I eat one cooked meal a day for dinner, been eating this way for a couple of years and thriving on it. That's awesome. If that's where you want to be, then that's cool. It's all about adding more raw as much as you can, keeping the fat low and getting rid of the animal products really. Um, but if cooked food doesn't feel good in your body, then don't do it. Eat more raw. It really depends. Everyone's gut microbiome is different. They're like our fingerprints. Every person's fingerprint is different. Every person's microbiome is different. So people are going to react differently to different foods. And it's not the food necessarily that you're reacting to. If you have gut issues, it's your microbiome that isn't ready to digest that kind of food. So you have to go slow. Just increase those foods a little bit slower and you'll be able to digest them a little bit more as time goes on. Um, Let's see, how about cooked beans? We don't do cooked beans. Obviously, if you want to, that's your prerogative. Uh, they're vegan. 
they're they're decent <laughs> it's not like they're toxic or anything but we do sprouted beans so we believe beans legumes like lentils mung beans chickpeas peas those kinds of things are very very healthy and we want to have them in our diets but we don't want to cook them so we sprout them instead i prefer the sprouted version there's way more minerals there's uh, like the phytates are super low. Don't get that gassy, bloaty feeling because they're alive. It's living food. So we like to sprout our lentils, sprouting our beans and seeds and what we can. Um, the only ones you don't want to sprout are red kidney beans because they can have a toxic uh, level of something in it. But yeah, just don't do the red kidney beans. If you do like pinto beans or black beans, just do a small amount. You don't have to do them. Um, but lentils, all the way. Lentils are like the staple for us. Lentils and mung bean sprouts and garbanzo beans. Those are the top three legumes that we sprout. Um, yeah. Love cooked beans and steamed veg, rice or potatoes for dinner. <laughs> I always say if you're going to do cooked food, do it with raw. So have a big salad and put like a little bit of beans in it. Put a little bit of quinoa in it or whatever. But make sure that you have a lot of raw with your cooked food. It just helps with digestion and plus it gets you more hydration. Because cooked food is dehydrating on the body. The body has to pull water to help digest it because you cook the water out. So yeah, just make sure you have a big salad with it if you're going to do that. Just had an amazing, amazing watermelon juice delicious that's so good in the desert <laughs> yelena you nate and ted definitely inspired inspired me to be high raw vegan and ditch a lot of the processed food so thank you you're very very welcome definitely life-changing and i've experienced so many benefits thank you Le yelena we love you so much that's awesome I'm glad that we can inspire um I'm highly allergic to bananas. Do you think one can be successful raw food without bananas? Of course, you can totally be successful without bananas. If you're allergic to something, then obviously you're going to have to eliminate it. But it's just one food. There's so many other things that you can have. There's mangoes and papayas and banana, uh, not bananas, obviously. Pineapples, I was thinking pineapples, oranges, apples, peaches, plums, nectarines, grapes. Why, like melons galore there's so many other things that you can eat the reason why a lot of raw vegans eat a lot of bananas is because it's inexpensive and they're higher calorie they're dense calories so it's easy to eat bananas here and there as a calorie filler as an instant energy as a way to make things creamier but they're not necessary you can focus on the foods that you do really good with and just increase the variety from there but if you are allergic to something obviously you want to keep it out of your diet Alyssa, what are your thoughts on cellulose and veg being hard for the body to break down? I was watching some videos, uh, Dr. Morse, he was talking about this. That's interesting because a lot of the research that's coming out right now is really pro high fiber. So our bodies do not digest fiber. We don't digest it. Our gut microbiome does. So it's not our food. Our gut microbiome needs fiber to thrive. And the people who eat the widest variety of plant fibers have the strongest immunity. They have the most serotonin. They have the best digestion. They are strong because they're eating these fibers. We don't digest them. Our bacteria does. And there's more of them than there are of cells of us. There's way more of them and they are depending on us to give them this fiber. The reason why people say it's hard to break down is because these people have weak gut microbiomes. They don't have the bacteria that in a great quantity to digest this fiber. So when you do eat like broccoli, it's not broccoli's fault. It's the fact that your gut microbiome is a weaker and can't digest those fibers adequately you need to grow your microbiome so that it can handle bigger amounts of fiber for example cabbage a lot of people have problems with cabbage and they say cabbage is hard to digest cabbage is only hard to digest when your gut microbiome is weak if your gut microbiome is strong and tuned to digest cabbage it's easy to digest nate and i will do like four or five cups of cabbage a day because we've trained our gut microbiome to enjoy eating large quantities of cabbage. So in order to be able to get there, you have to start slow. You can't just start off with two, three, four, or five cups of cabbage. You have to start off with like a quarter cup or less, even just a tablespoon of cabbage in your salad. Do that for a week. 
then do two tablespoons of cabbage. Do that for a week. Then go up to a quarter cup and do that for a week or two. Then do half a cup and go for a week or two. Gradually, slowly feed your gut microbiome so it grows with the amount of food that you're giving it. And then eventually, one day, you'll be able to have like three or four cups of cabbage. No problem. Easy to digest. No gas. But it's your microbiome. It's not the fact that these foods are hard to digest. It's just that you have a different microbiome and you need to train it. Just like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and you get there and you start trying to lift a 50 pound weight right off the bat, it's probably going to be really heavy. You're not going to be able to lift it and your muscles are going to be really sore the next day. But instead, if you go to the gym and you start with the five pounds, do five pounds, right, for a week or so, and then increase to seven pounds for a week or two, then increase to 10 pounds for a week or two, then you're up to 20 pounds for a week or two. And then yeah, after a couple months, you're doing the 50 pounds. And you're like, I remember when it was impossible to lift the 50 pounds, but now I can do it because I trained my muscles. I grew my muscles exactly the same way with your gut microbiome. You have to train them with the foods that irritate you. So if broccoli irritates you, start with one little floret of broccoli. If collard wraps bother you, start with one collard wrap, not five, <laughs> because the a higher amount of fiber is feeding the good bacteria, but there's just not enough of them to be able to deal with all of the fiber that you're including. So that's why tr slow transition is really good for some people who who are coming from a low fiber diet. You want to keep that in mind. So yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> um, do you have certification, schooling, training, and nutrition, coaching, etc.? I don't have any papers, but I have over 20 years of experience. So I started working in a natural health food store when I was 21 in 2001. That's when I started working in the natural health industry because I did, I was working at a donut shop before that. And I realized I was like, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of the garbage that I'm giving out the window every day at drive through. I don't want to be part of giving these like, junk foodie foods to people like I don't want to be part of this so I wanted to get out of that and start working in a place where I could be helping people to improve their health so I started at a natural health food store which sold grocery and supplements and I became the supplement um not really a manager I guess I was like assistant manager I also worked the cashier and I helped with produce and ordering that kind of thing so I was more like um, a supplement I spent most of the time in the supplement section then from there, I started working at another place called Optimum Health Vitamins, where we specifically was like a supplement store. We had like over 60,000 different products in there to sell, and I did coaching there. I did nutritional consulting. I never had any, again, I never had any degrees, but I learned a lot from just studying, and I learned a lot from my boss who had a bachelor's of science in nutrition. So he taught us a lot of stuff that he learned in school. We learned a lot from the supplement companies and I just learned a lot on my own. So I've been through all of it. I've done the fasting. I've done the electrolysis machine for the parasites. I've been on countless supplements, like crazy amounts of supplements. I discovered raw food in 2004, but I was never able to stick to it because I was always doing high fat or not eating enough. I was always restricting my calories. So eventually in 2014, that's when I um, became a raw vegan. So for the last seven years, I've been really in depth studying nutrition. So even though I don't have a diploma or anything, a piece of paper showing what I know, I've been dealing with all of this and learning all of this in real life for the last 20 years. So be 22 20 it'll be 21 years next year so yeah um wanted to ask how long it took for you to lose the weight after you went raw it took me about 14 months give or take 14 to 16 months to lose all of the weight and of course weight fluctuates depending on stress and that kind of thing but i've maintained it pretty good for the last seven years well six years after losing it um my seven year raw anniversary will be september 12th of this year so in only like month and a half month and a half i will have been raw for seven years i'm scared to sprout chickpeas <laughs> chickpeas are a little harder because they're a bigger pea but really you soak them for like 12 hours and then rinse them three to four times a day for three or four days and then they'll get a little tiny tail that's when you know they're ready and you can transfer them to the fridge and eat them um, do you ever get your blood checked? Um, I will be getting my blood checked at some point. I don't know. It hasn't really been um, 
top priority for us. We always talk about it, but we never actually do it. So eventually we will, and we will be sharing our results with everybody. Um, lentil sprouts are so delicious. They taste like crunchy, sweet, juicy peas. They do. I love it. Just harvested some blueberries. Awesome. Lisa, I wanted to thank you for really taking the time to educate us. Your answers are so intelligent and thoughtful. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Oh, that's such a kind comment. You guys make me want to cry. I love you so much. Um, do you guys deal with bloating when you first went raw? Yes, bloating happens because the gut microbiome is not used to the amount of fiber. So that, again, goes back to what we were talking about. Fiber, increase it slowly as you decrease the cooked food so that you grow your microbiome to be a fiber thriving colony instead of a cooked food or dead processed food colony, which they're the cleanup crew. They don't really give us a lot of benefit. They just clean up the dead stuff that we put in our body. But the fiber thriving guys, they're the ones that are giving us our immunity. They're giving us um, our serotonin because 90% of your serotonin is created in your gut. So that's your happy hormone. That's what makes you happy and lively and vibrant. So you want to feed those guys. It's very important to feed them fiber. They thrive on it. Um, does that work the same for being lactose intolerant or gluten intolerant? No, it doesn't work the same for allergies. Allergies are totally different than a gut imbalance. Um, for one, we are not baby cows, so we shouldn't be eating lactose anyways. But gluten, that's something that some people are sensitive to and should avoid. Those who have celiac disease should avoid it. And some people who are allergic to nuts and stuff. I would not recommend eating things that you are allergic to in order to get unallergic to them. But it's the gut problem, like the gut stuff, like your gassy, bloaty, um, you feel like you have a rock in your stomach, that kind of thing. That comes from um, just not having the gut microbiome to digest it. So uh, I love how you explain everything. So easy to understand. Love you the best in this new chapter in your life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to ask what you think about depleted soil and vegetables that have been grown in. Yeah, so... The depleted soil thing, it's, it's just a, a fact of life, unfortunately. It, it is what it is. Um, you could supplement if you feel like you want to. It's not like supplements are evil. Uh, if you're not getting the nutrition, then you got to supplement somehow. Uh, Nate and I eat a lot of food. We get a lot of plants in our diets. We haven't had any issues yet. But again, reason for the blood test would be just cool to know what's going on. But if you can get organic or just grow your own, that's always the best. Unfortunately, not everyone can do that, um, but just do the best you can. It is what it is. Unfortunately, our modern life is not set up for that. Um, but uh, support local farms. Like Nate and I are going to go to a lot of farmers markets. I know there's a Saturday one here in Vegas. We want to support the local farms as well as much as we possibly can. So. Yeah, take a supplement if you feel like you want you need the extra boost or just eat more food <laughs> as long as it's it's raw and whole plants because they're lower calories. So you can eat way more of them. Um, you're a great teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing such good information. Um, do you think you can be healthy enough to fight uh, the current flu that's been going around. <laughs> um, yes, definitely. Uh, Nate and I have had no problems. We did feel a little under the weather uh, for a couple days last year, but it wasn't like intense or anything like that. Um, it could have been stress related because uh, we were going through a lot of um, work related stress where we were up until way early in the morning. So that could have had a lot to do with it because diet isn't the be all end all. If you're not sleeping, if you're stressed out, if your relationships suck, if you have a job you hate, you're not getting out in nature, you're not exercising, you're not sleeping right, you're worried all the time. You can eat all the raw food in the world, but it's not going to stop certain things from happening or your immune system lowering. So there's so many things that come into play, not just diet. And raw food, just because you eat raw food doesn't mean you're never going to age, doesn't mean you're not going to get wrinkles, doesn't mean you're never going to get sick. It's just a really healthy way to eat and a great way to prevent stuff. So it's not a guarantee. It's just a great thing that you can do for your health. Uh, what supplements do you take now? 
Uh, we take B12 and D. Those are the things we always take. We might not take as much D now because we're going to be tanning <laughs> on the rooftop pool for like 20 minutes a day. That's our plan. So we may not take as much vitamin D as we used to. I used to take a lot of vitamin D when I was in Canada because it was like seven to eight months without sunshine on my skin. So I would take sometimes 5,000 to 10,000 IUs a day in the winter, in the deep winter months when I wasn't even going outside. So it really depends on your sun exposure for vitamin D. Only take it if you feel like if you're inside all day, you could take one. Uh, if you're outside, you don't need to take any. But uh, we take B12 because it's an, it's an environmental vitamin, not a food vitamin. We're not supposed to get it from our diets. We're supposed to get it from the soils of the earth. The bacteria actually produces B12 in our bodies. But most of us don't have the bacteria because we live in a sterile or we've taken lots of antibiotics or we eat very low fiber diets. We don't have the bacteria to produce B12. So that's why people are like, we have to eat animals to get B12 because the animals don't actually make B12 either. It's their bacteria that make B12 and it's in their muscle system and then we eat it and that's how we get B12. So really meat eaters can be equally deficient in B12 as vegans because it's an environmental vitamin. We're supposed to get it from the raw, the raw wild soils of the earth from the bacteria that live on there. So our modern life is what's deficient, not the vegan diet. So I don't mind taking a supplement, it's not at the end of the world. What was your heaviest weight? Um, I don't know what my heaviest weight was. The heaviest weight that I recorded was 187. Um, my lowest weight was one. 07, but I was way too thin back then. That was when I was getting divorced from my first or for from my husband in 2016. It was about a year after I went raw. I lost a little bit too much weight because I was so mega stressed out. Like it was hardcore to um, get a divorce. <laughs> so yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't talk about the. <laughs> That's not something I talk about on here. So. You guys will just have to not know. <laughs> it's just something I don't, I like to get involved because it's too much of a debate and I want to keep my page uplifted and enlightened. It, again, it's, yee. <laughs> Are you going to save this live? Yes, I am. It will be an IGTV. I'm going to have to get off soon though, because I know if I go over an hour and a half, sometimes it doesn't save. So hopefully this one will save. I'm sure it will. Um, which brand vitamin D do you take? We've taken Garden of Life, but we take anything that's vegan. Just tuned in. Did you move to Vegas? Yes, we moved to Vegas. You can watch this. I did a house tour and we had Nate on and everything. So watch this IGTV when it's done. I'll be sharing it soon. Um, let's see. Is raw veganism good for getting pregnant? My friend has fertility problem is currently on a sad diet. She really wants to have a baby. It's definitely going to help. I mean, it's better than what she's doing. <laughs> so make sure she eats enough. That's key. If you're under eating on any diet, it's going to be hard to get pregnant because your body is in starvation mode. And it's like, well, we can't have a baby right now because we have to grow another human being. So make sure she's eating enough variety of plants, lots of them. If she has to have cooked food, that's fine as long as it's vegan. Um, and no junk food, like just get rid of the junk food. This is, it's not food. <laughs> um, any recommendations if I can't quite afford organic produce yet, or at least can only afford some, do what you can. We don't eat all organic. <laughs> it's like, it would cost so much money <laughs> to eat all organic and it's just not going to happen. So we don't, we eat a lot of con conventional stuff, but we also support local farmers. We also get organic food when it's um, cheap and looks good <laughs> in season, that kind of thing. I uh, got John Kohler and Kara and Marcus in Vegas. Yes. Do you think you'll be connecting? Hopefully it would be really cool to connect with them. Um, I will reach out to them probably in the new year. Uh, again, Nate and I really want to focus hunker down, get into a routine and schedule. So we're really going to be um, just focusing on you guys, social media and doing our own routines, getting into a fitness routine, because that's something that I've been working on for my life. <laughs> but I really want to get into a good workout routine. I really want to do some um, good meditations, more self work, that kind of thing. But in the new year, we want to connect with some other vegans in the area. Um, glad you guys are enjoying this live. Um, one of the plant-based doctor was saying that it is not true that our soils are depleted. Um, there's a lie made up in order to sell supplements. I mean, that's, that could also be made up. <laughs> I don't even know. I just know that some, like the soils are not like they were back in the day. So 
a lot of farmers only add certain minerals back to the soil. It's not the same as it was. They don't rotate their crops. Uh, it's monocropped all across the board. It really depends on what you're buying too. If you're buying local farmers produce, it's probably way more nutritious than Beyond Burgers or wheat that's grown year after year after year after year on the same soil and they're not being replaced with certain nutrients. So again, anything that you read online or you hear from other people, even what you hear from me, just do some research and do what feels right to you. If you feel like you need a little supplement, then do it, but don't do it out of fear. Don't do things because someone said so and now you're scared of it. Don't eat all organic because someone said pesticides were gonna kill you. Because these things scare us into doing it and we're doing it out of a place of fear. And we should not be doing things out of a place of fear. We should do, be doing them out of a place of joy and abundance and because you want to eat organic, because you wanna take a supplement if you want to. Don't do things because you are scared of the opposite. That's, just, that's my best piece of advice. <laughs> um, what vitamin D do you use while in Canada? Actually, I had, um, before I was vegan, I had gotten a bunch of supplements. I don't know if they were vegan. I think they were vegan, um, but it was a brand that was a local little company and I don't remember the brand, but I, I used up what I had for that when I was in Canada. And Garden of Life is a great brand. So that's what we use now. As long as it's vegan, it's all good. <laughs> Positive. Positive vibes all the way. Uh, is it okay to eat a large amount of blueberries, like two pounds in one sitting? <laughs> if you drink a lot of water with it, yes, <laughs> you could get away with it. But it's really high fiber, and the fiber in blueberries tends to suck up a lot of water, so you might feel gassy or bloated. Or it might feel like there's a rock in your stomach just because of the huge amount of fiber that you're eating. So drink a lot of water to help that to move through your body. So... Hey guys, oh, you're so encouraging. Thank you so much. I really want to encourage you to come at this lifestyle with a, an open heart, lots of love, uh, and no fear because it's not about fear. It's not about scaring you away from cooked food. It's not about scaring you away from any of that. It's about enjoying the raw food as it is and finding beauty in it, enjoying great meals variety, the colors, the beauty, the hydration, the lightness, everything about the raw food diet. Focus on that and not all the things that you're fearful of because again, fear doesn't win. Love always wins. Um, do you have a recommendation for raw vegan protein powder? I'm using Sun Warrior and I like it, but I want to see what you suggest. I don't use a protein powder. I use sprouts. I like to put sprouts in salads and you could put sprouts in um, your smoothie if you wanted to. Uh, but we don't use a protein powder and we probably won't be using a protein powder. If I was to, Sun Warrior would probably be my choice because it's raw. But other than that, I don't feel a need to use a protein powder at all because I just get all my protein from my food. I eat enough. We eat around, I eat around 2,400 calories. Nate might eat like 25, 2,600 calories, just a little bit more than us or than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we don't need the protein. We get more than enough in our diets because we eat enough food. We eat a lot of greens. We eat a lot of sprouts. We eat a lot of different variety. We eat root vegetables like radishes and carrots. We eat a lot of cabbage. Mung bean sprouts have really high protein, broccoli, mushrooms, and all of our fruit combined, it all adds up. I get on average 50 to 70 grams of protein a day, which is more than my RDA of 46 grams. So I'm totally good. I don't need any extra protein. Um, what sprouts do you use in your salads? All kinds. We like lentil is our favorite. I personally prefer the beluga lentils, the little black beluga ones. Those are my favorite lentils of all. Uh, but we also like the red crimson, the green, the French puy. Um, what else do we like? Um, speckled peas I really like and mung bean. We do all of those. We also sprout uh, broccoli. We sprout red cabbage, clover, alfalfa, fenugreek, mustard. Um, we sprout a lot of different kinds because we, we want to have, remember, it's all about plant diversity. So we want to have as much diversity as we can. So we're always using different sprouts. As we use up the sprout, then we put a different, a different bean or seed in there. So is it true you can eat corn raw? Yep. 
you can eat corn raw. Roll it off the cob if you want. We like to just shave it off and put it in a salad or in a salsa. Corn raw is totally fine. Chew it well, obviously, because chewing is the first step in digestion. Digestion begins in the mouth. If you don't chew, your stomach's gonna be like, yo, I, I can't chew for you. <laughs> so you wanna chew your food. That's the number one place where you're gonna get the most benefit out of digestion is right here. So chew your food well. Um, eggplant, we like to uh, marinate and dehydrate our eggplant just so there's a little heat in there. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing eggplant straight raw you marinate it and dehydrate it. Uh, what do you use to give chocolate and vanilla flavor? We use cacao. Um, you don't have to use cacao. You could use carob if you want. It depends on the person. Again, all of this information, some people say, no, 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 don't do cacao. It's too stimulating. But some people are like, eh, it's cool. Have it if you want to. The whole thing, remember, it boils down to fear. If people are scaring you into not eating cacao, then you have to change your perspective. Don't eat it because you don't want to, not because you're scared of cacao. Change to carob if you prefer the taste of carrot. If, if cacao gives you heart flutters or you feel weird eating it, then don't eat it. Don't do it because someone online told you not to because that can, it, again, creates confusion. Just do what feels best for you within reason. Raw corn is delicious. Yes, it is. Just the plants, ma'am. Love you, girl. Um, did you use a calorie tracking app or system? Yes, I use Chronometer and I used it a lot in the beginning when I first started raw to make sure that I was eating enough calories because it's very easy to undereat on a raw diet, extremely easy to undereat on a raw diet. So you have to track your calories in the beginning to make sure you're getting enough because that's the number one reason why people aren't able to sustain a raw diet is because they're just not eating enough because they don't know how much to eat. So track your calories in the beginning. We don't track our calories very much anymore because we know how much we need. Um, we know how big our salads need to be. We, need, we know how much fruit we need to eat. Uh, we've been doing it for so long that we don't need to track anymore, but we do every once in a while. We'll throw a day into our chrono reader and be like, oh, well, maybe we should add more bok choy, get more calcium or whatever. So very rarely we do we track. I do track for when I do a YouTube video, though, so you guys get to see what I'm eating. But yeah, I recommend tracking in the beginning to get to learn the fuel that you're putting in your body. Learn about it. Learn about how many, how, what, what does an 800 calorie salad look like? What does an 800 calorie smoothie look like? What do you have to put in there to get it? What are you, what nutrients are you getting? It's, it's a learning tool. It's not a crutch. You don't have to do it forever, but learn about the food that you're putting into your body. I mean, we don't, we don't even question it. We go to a fast food joint and eat whatever. We don't even question what's in it or what could be doing to us. It's just normal life, right? We just eat what looks good, what smells good. And we don't learn about real food and what real food does for our bodies. So track and see what's going on in there. I didn't realize you can sprout beluga lentils. Yes, you can sprout any lentil. We have tons of different lentils in our, in our cabinet. So we try to get as much variety as possible. Um, it's been way too long since we all had a fruit luck. I agree, totally, <laughs> we need to do something like that. Um, I sprout brown, green lentils and mung beans, awesome. Do you eat fermented foods? Yes, I do, we do. We eat uh, kimchi and sauerkraut. Nate actually uh, included a really, really delicious kimchi recipe in his dude food book that we're actually gonna make some soon because we love kimchi so much um, and sauerkraut too. A miso, miso paste we do. Uh, miso paste is a fermented soy product, but you can get chickpea miso as well. So we do either or. We're not scared of the soy because it's fermented. So it's not the same as um, processed soy. What would you suggest for rhubarb? My sister gave me some, a ton of it. I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> well, don't eat the greens for one. Um, you don't want to eat the greens. Uh, I would just chop it up and put it in a smoothie, maybe with some mango a mango rhubarb or a rhubarb strawberry with dates to give it a little more sweetness that would be delicious or you could juice it too you could juice it and add it to your smoothie if you wanted to because it is kind of high fiber if you're not used to that amount of fiber you could do that but um what about green smoothies versus chewing salads you could do either do either whatever you're able to do is cool um uh we like to chew our salads because we love eating so <laughs> um i don't like green smoothies personally it's just not my jam i prefer all fruit smoothies that's why i eat a lot of salads because i like them separate 
<laughs> but you could totally add greens to your smoothie if you want. I love corn, but in eating it raw for 10 years, I know it's funny. People are like, you can eat corn raw. Yeah. You can eat broccoli raw. You can eat a lot of stuff raw. There's only a couple things that you wouldn't want to eat raw. Like eggplant again, you'd want to dehydrate it. Some people say mushrooms are toxic. I don't, I don't believe they are. I'm sure there is some like hard to digest stuff in there, but I don't think they're toxic. When I hear toxic, I think of bleach. <laughs> I don't think of food, right? So we like to marinate our mushrooms and dehydrate them. So they're really easy for us to digest. We've never had a problem with mushrooms. Are you eating like all day? No. <laughs> I have like our smoothies maybe take like five, 10 minutes, maybe in the morning. Lunch is maybe a half hour worth of eating time and dinner, same thing. So it's not like we're eating any more than any other person. Uh, we do eat bigger portions but we don't eat, we're not eating all day. Um, I'll snack on fruit here and there, but that's like peel a banana and eat a banana is not, not very big deal to eat. I'm vegan and love it, but I'm concerned I'd be eating all day to keep up with the calories. You just gotta eat calorie dense stuff, not celery. Um, you can add celery to a salad for flavor and stuff and for extra plant variety, but you don't have to live on certain low fiber things or low calorie things. Um, bananas, fruits are really high calorie, which give you that instant energy. And we do date based dressings, which gives a lot of calories with our salad. That's why we do date based dressings. So five dates is like 300 calories. And we'll put that with our 300 calorie salad. We have a 600 calorie salad, do that twice a day, plus our thousand calorie smoothie and snacks. It's easy. How's your mom? My mom is doing great. I love my mama. She's in Canada right now. Um, just living her best life. She's a homeopath too. So if anyone needs homeopathic anything, has it, don't hesitate to hit up my mom, the gentle homeopath. She is that on Instagram. So the gentle homeopath, go hit her up if you want some homeopathic help. Baby bok choy, awesome. What source do you buy from for sprouting? I personally like uh, Perfect Foods Inc. Perfect Foods Inc on Instagram. Their website is www.800wheatgrass.com. That's where we get our lentils, our radishes, and our broccoli from. We get those three from them. And then the rest of the sprouts we either buy off Amazon or I really like Mums. M-U-M-M-S, Mums Sprouting on Instagram. I think it's Mums Sprouting Seeds, maybe. I'm not sure. But Mums, they're a Canadian company. They ship to the U.S. We bought a bunch of stuff from them, too. So they're really great for sprouts. Um, it's Jeremy. Tell Nate I said what's up. I will. I will, Jeremy. Peace. Awesome. Bok choy. Do you take an iodine supplement? Um, I do have one, but we rarely take it. I don't even remember to take it most of the time. Um, Lugol's is the one we have. Uh, you could take an iodine from dulse or kelp or anything like that. You could add it to your salads. We do use a lot of dulse because we've been eating a lot of Caesar lately. <laughs> and we put some dulse in the Caesar for the flavor and the iodine. Um, but yeah, we have a Lugol's, but again, we rarely take it. It's not something that's um, a recurring daily thing like the B12 and the D. And even then, we don't always take those every day either. So uh, I spend an hour eating dinner. <laughs> Sometimes it takes uh, 30, 40 minutes to eat a salad. It really depends on the size, what we're doing. We like to play chess. Or lately, we've been watching X-Files, which is awesome. We love X-Files. Uh, or Star Trek or whatever. We'll watch some show and we'll just eat while we watch that. But during 75 Hard, we're going to be playing chess while we eat. So can you type the information? Um, what information are you looking for? Mums. Uh, mums is the mums sprouting seed or, um, let's see, perfect foods ink you can there's no spaces for instagram um yeah thank you for smile rose thank you for that uh but mums and perfect foods inc uh are for the seeds that we get or you can just get them on amazon as long as they're sprouting seeds because sprouting seeds are actually tested for pathogens so they're way safer to sprout um and they're good quality so you can get those 
Um, thanks for the information on not being hard to get calories in. That's my biggest hesitation in going raw. Just add more raw to add more raw, get more raw in slowly increase the size of your salads and decrease the amount of cooked food until you're where you want to go, whether it's all raw or just high raw. It doesn't matter. It's about adding more raw and enjoying it and just focusing on the food, like be in the moment with your food. You don't have to rush through it or anything like that. And yeah, take your time to prepare. We spend way less time preparing our food than we used to when we made cooked food. So like waiting for a, a potato to cook <laughs> or rice, like whole grain rice, like at 45 minutes to an hour to make that. I know you most of the time is waiting, but you have to go and check on it every once in a while. So I find like it's easy to make a salad. It takes only 15 minutes for us to chop and chop a salad and blend the dressing. But we've been doing it for a long time. And with time, obviously you get better and better and better every time you do it. Just like yoga. There's a reason why it's called a yoga practice and not yoga perfect because there's no such thing as perfection. It's all a practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the more flexible you become, the more efficient you become. And it's just a daily practice. That's all it is. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this live. Um, does raw help with your eyesight? I believe it's helped my eye health more than the eyesight. Um, I still have the same prescri prescription I've had for like seven years. And before that, I was needing a new prescription every year. So it's not getting better, but it's not getting worse. So I'm cool with that. The eye doctor also said my eye health was phenomenal. Um, I was at risk when I was younger, even my 20s, for retinal detachment. And the last time I went to see the eye doctor, she said that I no longer am at risk for retinal detachment. So my eyesight, my eye health has improved. I don't care about the eyesight. I actually really love my glasses, so it's all good. <laughs> um, let's see, do we need 150 micrograms of iodine a day, especially when eating cruciferous veg? Um, again, add kelp if you want to. Uh, we eat a lot of cruciferous and we've had no issues. Again, not sure. Everyone's going to be different, obviously. And we According to chronometer, we get enough, but we eat a lot of like sea veggies and that kind of thing too. So I'm thinking we get enough, but you take a supplement if you want to. Again, it's not the end of the world to take a supplement if you need to. It's all good. What's a good salad dressing? Oh, we love, we, oh, <laughs> there's like 600 salad dressings in my ebook. So there's plenty in there. We have so many favorites. It's hard to tell <laughs> what our favorite is, but a really good one that really got me through the first year as a raw vegan was my French dressing. It's super easy. Five dates, two cloves of garlic, the juice of a lemon, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some smoked paprika, blend that with some water and pour it on your salad. It's so good. I love it. It's really easy to make. Um, and that got me through lots of days. I used to eat it daily, almost daily. So that's a great one. But I've got over 600 recipes now, 40% off all the eBooks. The code is rawfood40. Just go to the link in my bio or payhip.com slash rawfoodromance. And you can go grab any of those recipe books. The code is rawfood40, all this, all without spaces. Um, yeah. Do you think you need energy from fire? How so? Um, like as in cooking the food, we have, I have way more energy <laughs> eating raw than ever ate eating cooked. So definitely don't need to eat the cooked food, but that's just my, my choice. Going to start tracking, getting on track. Awesome. Your teriyaki dressing. Mm, teriyaki dressing is so good. That one's really good. That one's in dips and dressings. We've been really loving the miso. On August 1st, we're gonna add one called Dill Dream to the app. That one is, that was one of my favorites. Oh, I could live on Dill Dream. It's a hemp-based dressing. We do it in the evenings. So it's more of an evening dressing because there's a little bit of hemp seeds in it. But that one is one of my favorites. We've got the spicy ginger almond, miso Caesar. Oh my gosh, Moroccan lime. That's a no fat one that I love. Sweet maple mustard, maple barbecue. Oh my gosh. There's just, there's just too many to list. So <laughs> you got to check out the books, get 40% off those eBooks. The link is in my bio, but is the French in the app? It is not, but I will add it to the app because a lot of people um, want it. So I'll add it to the app August 1st. So you can add it to your, your daily meals. So We've got, a, I think we've got about eight uh, uh, recipes coming to the app on August 1st. The app, by the way, I will share here. 
www.rawfoodromance.com. Boop. There we go. And it's five dollars a month. I pinned it to the top so you can go um, grab that if you want. It's also fifty dollars a year. You get two months free if you sign up for the year. So that's pretty cool. If you just want to try it out for a couple months, do the five dollars a month. It's totally cool. Whatever you want. But it's a meal planning app, so you get to you get five days. It auto generates three of the days, and then you can fill in the other two. The only reason it generates three days is because it's harder to shop for five days on a raw diet. Because by Friday, your lettuce is wilty. So I like to only do three days at a time. Um, but you can fill in the five days if that's what you want to do. But you get three days automatically. And then the other two days, you can fill out on your own. You can swap out the recipes. You can clear the meal plan. You can add all your own stuff, uh, your own choices of recipes. There's 43 recipes in there right now. More recipes added every month. $5 a month, it plan, you plan out your days and it generates a grocery list based off the recipes that you choose. So you're really only buying what you need for the recipes, which is really cool. So that's there to help you guys, $5 a month again. Um, can you explain the meal plan books? Does it give you choices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yes, the meal plan books are laid out for the course of 30 days. Every day, you just follow it meal by meal. There's a grocery shopping list, on the first page and it gives you, you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then the next day there's a new list and then you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there's different meal every day for 30 days. So there's 90 recipes in there. You can use it as a recipe book or you can follow it day by day for a meal plan. At the back of the book in meal plan two and three, there are three day shopping lists. So you can buy for day one, two, and three, and then you've got everything for those three days and you just have to follow page by page. It's really easy. Um, I tried to put little boxes where you need to rinse your sprouts or soak your nuts or whatever, like little prompts, like in the morning when you make your breakfast, soak your nuts because we're going to need them for dinner. So I tried to keep the planning in those meal plans uh, as easy as possible. I mean, it's always going to be overwhelming when you learn new stuff, when you're changing your diet, when you're changing your workout, whatever. It's always going to be um, a learning curve and that's natural and it's normal. So how much is the app? It's $5 a month or $50 a year where you get two months free. Um, also check Lissa's YouTube channel, recipes, playlist. Yes, Nicole, thank you for mentioning that. The app is great. Um, Nicole did a year on raw. She's awesome. Uh, which book is it that has the meal plan? Um, there's three meal plans. Meal plan one is being redone. So that is going to be redone, um, hopefully by the fall. Meal plan two has a few dehydrator recipes in it, um, more complex, fun stuff. But meal plan three is best for beginners because there's no dehydrator required and zero tree nuts for those who have allergies to nuts. Meal plan three is the best for beginners. So that's the one I would recommend people start with. Um, again, 40% off the eBooks, code rawfood40, link in my bio. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let's save this onto our IGTV. I hope that it'll save. I'm pretty sure it will, but you guys can rewatch it. We did the house tour. We did all fun, kinds of fun stuff. I'm so grateful to have you all been here and thank you so much for all your support. It means the absolute world to us. You are the reason that we're able to share, that we are able to create recipes and come live and answer your direct messages, your support, buying a badges here when, whenever we do a live, buying a badge helps, getting our eBooks helps signing up for the app helps every little bit helps us to just be able to do a two hour live <laughs> with you guys and answer your questions because we're here for you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to message me. I'm always here. I don't have an assistant. I answer all of my questions as I see them come in. So I try my best to be here for you. That's my ultimate goal. And because of you, your support, we're able to do this. So it's all good. Thank you so much. We love you epically to the end of the world. Um, so yeah, let's see here. So we've got this beautiful view. We've got the beautiful view going on. And it's time to have some fruit. I think we're gonna have some melons and mangoes. And get ready to have a nice dinner. We're gonna have Caesar again tonight because Caesar is so good. <laughs> 
Um, but thank you so much again, you guys, for joining. And we will be back every Monday at 1 p.m. We will be doing a live Q&A. And thank you, Joel, for buying a badge. Thank you so much. Um, but we're going to be doing a live Q&A every Monday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. So join in. If you have questions, you can save them and uh, hang out with us every Monday. And yeah, keep it. Keep strong and keep being awesome. I love you guys. Thank you for all your compassionate food choices and just being awesome, loving yourself. I love you all and fruit on. <laughs>